What's up guys, welcome back to Bass Brothers Fishing DMV. Naeem here and we are doing part two, it's on today. We're gonna to pick up right where we left off with part one. If you haven't seen part one, click that link right there. Get caught up, it brings you right to where this video starts. I'm super excited about everything that's going on around me with this build guys. You guys can see some light, some good things happening. We are getting near the end of this build and I can start to see the end. The finish line is near guys and trust me, I'm ready to get this boat on the water, trust me. So my plan is to go hard, get this thing wrapped up as soon as possible. Fourth of July is coming and I'm ready to get this boat on the water. Something special I did at the end of this video guys, I went uncut, unedited, so watch this video till the end. You get to see real time what happened when I hit that switch to see if this stuff would power on. Anyway, without further delay, let's continue. This is a finished product guys, both rivets are in. I use 3 16 inch rivets, which are the largest size rivets. It actually fits perfect inside the bus bar and it's in there really tight. So I'm really happy with this. Of course it's flush, no screws sticking out. I would love to have riveted both sides, but I can't access the back. Don't have a rivet long enough to be able to go through both angle aluminum on that side, but it's all good. Here's what I mean guys, this is the opposite side, the bus bar that I screwed in. You can see where the screws are sticking out. I'll actually have to grind this down at some part uh, for me to do the side panels to this rod locker. Alright guys, I just did some cleaning up of the wires. All of them are going to the bus bar except for one black wire coming from the bus. That's gonna head down to the control panel. So I have a combination of wire ties and the Gorilla Tape that I'm using to secure the wires onto the framing. And I'm just using 15 pound Gorilla mounting tape and it's really sticky stuff. As long as you clean the aluminum off, it sticks on really good, guys. I wanna believe I won't have any peeling issues. I mean, time will tell, but I'm going in with the Gorilla Tape allows me a lot of flexibility to be able to mount wires wherever I need to. I just cut the size tape I need depending on the space I'm trying to install the wires and it's working out pretty well. All right guys, really quick, just wanted to show you the wires that I'm using to connect to the bus stud. And the connectors I'm using are these, I've got these off of Amazon. Hopefully you guys can see that. They fit one fourth studs, M6. This is what it looks like out the pack. I mean, it looks like a regular circle or ring terminal connector, but this actually fits a one fourth size stud down to a 14 gauge wire. It took me a while to find these, but I was eventually found it on Amazon. I'll leave a link in the description below. And where this goes to is right here on the stud like that. So I'm gonna do this for the positive side. So you want it just to where it's sticking out the end, not too far. Just right there, looks about right. Hopefully you guys can see that and just squeeze down on it. Get a nice solid connection. Always good to test the connection before you finalize it. There you go guys, ready for action. All right guys, so what we just did was ran the main power to the bus all the way down and we're going to clean all this up but this is just getting the length of the wire correct ran it all the way and then it'll go down in here that's where the fuse box control panel will be it's coming along guys All right guys, just showing you a high level of what the main hatch looks like. I got the wires 
pretty much hidden and looking good guys cable management got to do it protects the wires and make keeps it looking nice and clean next steps will be to install the control panel and fuse box right there i know that i want the control panel roughly in this spot right here toggle switch right next to it toggle switch will control the led readout for the voltage meter and the lower led lights i want to be able to turn these on and off and not have them running all day just turn them on when i need them i want to get the control panel as far to the right as possible uh, without going past the wall that's right about right here inside this hatch This is a very tight fit all the way around. It's gonna be just like that. I'm now covering it with the side panel. I'll get the hole cut out and then go ahead and carpet the side panel and then install the control panel and make the final wire connections. All right guys, so I don't really know that I need to do this, but I figure this can help the glue stick to the aluminum better. I'm gonna go ahead and sand down the aluminum sheet before I put glue on it. All right guys, don't know if you can see that, but roughed up pretty good. One last thing I need to cut out will be the port for the charger, onboard charger. And the one I'm going with is this one right here. It's an AC port plug. I'll leave a link in the description below so that you guys can check it out. And how it works is instead of having to run a power cord into your hatch or wherever your onboard charger is, you just go ahead and install this guy. And it's a basic port that you can plug into. This end looks like a regular plug that your actual charger will plug into. So the way I'm planning to do this is install this about right here and this side will go through here, come out the back side where the charger is and where the batteries are. So to do this, we got to cut out a two inch hole and that way we can finish up this panel right here. So guys, I've got both holes marked that I need to make cutouts for. This is for the AC port and this red dot right here is for the toggle switch. Panel's looking good, it's all set up, ready to be in for the final installation. The idea how I'm gonna try to do this to limit how many screws are exposed will be to screw in along as close to the wall here as I can to the rod locker. That way, when I put the side panel on the rod locker, hopefully it will cover the screws going down here. And I'll probably put three or four across the top when I do put the flooring in the boat, it will cover probably a good inch or more of the base of the panel. So the flooring of the boat will hold the bottom of this panel in place. All right guys, what I wanna do is show you the screws that I'm using to secure the panel to the actual frame. I did a lot of research to figure out what screws work best. And I don't know what works best, but this is what I'm going with. And I think this is what's gonna work best for me. Uh, these are self-drilling screws, as you guys can see by text. These are sold right at Home Depot. Uh, I've got a few sizes, but right now I'm using the half-inch screw, and it's just the right length for what I'm dealing with. It all depends how thick your carpet is, how thick your actual side panel is. I, I, this is an aluminum panel, so the thickness is very, very thin. I'm going with 0.025 thickness on the panel, so it's very thin, so I can get away with using really short screws, and what that does for me is limit how much the screw sticks out on the back end of the framing. And one of the key things, guys, through all the research I did was to make sure you, got, you guys get self-drilling screws. Those work best. That way you don't have to drill a pilot hole.
All right guys, everything's coming on really well. I've got the port installed for the charger. Control panel is not installed, it's just resting in place. So just, cause I'm actually gonna make the connections with the panel hanging out, it'll be a little bit easier. Toggle switch is in place. We're gonna go ahead and get this fuse box bus bar combo installed right about here and start making our wire connections. And they're pretty good, guys. All right, guys, really quick, for the Blue Sea systems, it tells you exactly what size terminals you need. And the one that fits this one perfectly, that's a really good one. Eight gauge number 10, that's the, that's the model number right there. So this is the exact one that fits perfectly on the Blue Sea Systems bus bar. All right guys, here's a moment of truth. I have not tried it, and that's the honest truth. I'm about to put main power on right here, which should light up the control panel. Uh, the toggle switch, I believe is in the off position right now. I may have to adjust it or flip it, depending if the wires are correct or the positioning is right. And then I'll be able to hit the first three switches, hopefully, fingers crossed and we'll have hatch lights. All right, so here we go, guys. First time you guys are here for the ride. All right, so that's power on. Nothing's happening up there. Hmm. Okay. I, this battery's not dead. All right, let's keep going. Uh, let's see if I switch this. Nothing. All right, so something's off, literally. Everything is fused, but I'm not even getting, pop wait, there are lights on in here. Okay, wait a minute, guys. Uh, we have lights, we have power. Okay, so let's see, rod locker. Oh, wow, look at that, guys. Oh my gosh. All right, I have to figure out why my toggle switch is not working but I will figure that out. I didn't realize that it was actually on, so <laughs> I got nervous. All right, so, all right, we'll figure out what's going on with the toggle switch, but guess what? Rod locker lights are on, guys, excellent. All right, let's try front hatch. Ooh, there we go, guys. This looks pretty good. I believe all lights are on. And this is daytime, so it'll be a little bit harder for you guys to see it possibly, but we've got lights, we've got lights. Maybe I could kill, kill the garage lights and see if that makes a difference. Again, guys, I'm just recording this real time. No edits. Let's turn off these lights. And this is what we've got. All right, I'm gonna turn off my work light. I only got one hand here. Hang on, guys. Ah. All right, work light is off. All right, so we got rod locker, front hatch. All the front hatch lights are on. This is beautiful. You guys have no idea how excited I am right now. Oh, we forgot, we have to test one more. Rear hatch, rear hatch, there it is, there it is. Rear hatch lights are on. Guys, I am super, super stoked right now to actually see this stuff power up. Again, running wires all throughout, underneath, through conduit, all the way in there. I gotta hide that a little bit better. I got a little bit of wire showing in a rod locker, but I will take care of that. But man, that looks sweet, look at that. I'm excited. I am truly excited. I really didn't pay attention to the lighting in here, but this light is on as well. Ah, oh, man. Whew. All right, so 
I just got to figure out why my toggle switch is not working, but I will figure that out. Maybe I have it wired backwards, um, but I will switch the wire right now and see if that makes a difference. I'll be right back. I quickly figured out what was wrong, why the toggle switch is not coming on, and it's because I did not fuse it. Uh, let's move these wires out the way. This fuse right here at the bottom is empty, and that's where the toggle switch wire is, this one that my finger is touching right now. So I'm gonna drop a fuse in there and we should be good to go. Put that there. All right guys, got it hooked up. Let's turn power back on, back here. And let's try the toggle switch now. Uh, let's get back in the boat. And there we go, there we go, there we go, let's go. There we go, let's go. Get it, get it, get it, get it. Lights, camera, action. Everything is up and running. USB ports have lights. Battery readout out is there. Toggle switch is working. All right, guys, I am so excited. It's not even funny. All the lights work, the switch, the panel, bus bar, fuses, all the connections, the soldering, the splicing. Aside from the mess in the boat, man, it's a sight to see all these lights on. Panels working, everything is functioning as planned. Master switch, the master fuse. I'll do a full rundown once this boat is done. All right, that's it for now, guys. The next step is literally nav lights, bilge pump, and then it's on to decking, guys. Hook up the trolling motor, and this bad boy is on the water. So the end is in sight, guys. I'm super excited. I think the process hopefully will speed up. It's very hard to get everything done with family, work, of course, trying to fish and work on the boat. So I promise you guys, I'm gonna get this boat done and get this bad boy out in the water. Thank you for riding with me. Of course, full playlist at the top of the screen and in the description below. If you've missed this build, this is intended to take you on this journey all the way from start to finish in as much detail as I can for you guys, all right? So we'll catch you on the next video. Stay safe out there.